Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to talk about M files, some plotting and uh, more linear algebra applications. So we are in Octave. I'm on the command window, but I'm going to show how to use uh, M files, which is simply uh, a script where you can have your MATLAB or Octave code and uh, save it and modify it and use it as a, any kind of program. So there's a, besides the common window, there's a tab for editor. In editor is a simple text editor. For entering commands, uh, comments, you can use a percentage sign. This is an M file script, is in green. You can also use a, a hashtag, but this only works in Octave, it doesn't work in, in MATLAB. Octave has many syntax, um, syn syntax options that supersede the ones that are available in MATLAB. MATLAB is more restrictive. So we can do different things. For example, I will make a vector x that it will be a vector that goes from 0 in 0 0.1 steps until 100. And this is a row vector, but I would like it to make it column. So I use a tilde to transpose it and make a column vector. And I use a semicolon, so I will not print the output. So now this I call this file linalg before so I, if I want to save it I go to save file as and I will go and save it <clears throat> so now if I want to execute this file I can do many things if I go to this uh, cogs symbol I execute it now because I am on a different folder, it as, asks me if I want to change the directory. So I change the directory and I now have run the program. I have run it and I see no output. Why? Because I generated only a vector x, but with the semicolon I suppress the output. But if I now type x in the command prompt, I will see the, the vector. I can also run the M file just by typing its name. Now it has run again. So now it doesn't do much. So for example, I can, I can make any function, so any mathematical function that I can write. For example, I can say I1 equal X square. Oh, sorry, that's a... So if I do this and I try to run this, there will be an error. Why is there an error? Because a vector, uh, the power of a vector, in this case, x to the y, this is a generic form of writing a mathematical equation, doesn't have anything to do with the names I chose for the vectors. This is an error message from Octave. x to the y is not defined for a, a non-square matrix. Octave doesn't know exactly what I want. What I actually want is element-wise power. So I want to uh, square every element of the vector and obtain another vector of the same dimensions. So for this, I need to use the dot uh, operator. So the dot in Octave, MATLAB, and some other languages uh, describes any kind of element wise operation. So if I do this, I will get the square of a vector. So now if I run this, I can see what X is, Y1. So if I want to concatenate them into now 
I make a matrix whose columns are the X and Y1 vectors. So now I have both of them. So now, for example, I can plot these vectors. This is very easy. A basic plot is very easy. So I just write plot X comma Y1. If I run this, we'll see the plot that's simply a quadratic function. So let's say I want to make the plot a little bit prettier. The first thing that would look nice is to change the line width. So run again. And now the line width is larger. I could add legends, for example, X label. I have to this put the legend. These the legends are string text, so they have to be within a quotation mark. So this will be called X. Y label. It will be called X square because that's what I'm doing run it again and now I have x and x squared nicely uh, octave has an interpreter a, a text interpreters that basically uh, understands that what I want is um, what I want with this uh, hat operator is an exponent so it formats it as an exponent this is nice for text you can do some quite uh, sophisticated equation formatting in labels in graphs but so we will see that on another video so for example I could do many other lines for example y2 could be x square uh, cube over 3 and now there are different ways in which I can plot two things. So I usually need to do pairs of X and Y values. So if I run this, you see that there are, ah, there, there are two functions, but now uh, the line width was only applied to the last uh, set of vectors. So the quadratic equation is the blue line, but it has a uh, has the original line width. So actually, I need to copy this also in here. So let's say not over three. Let's say over t over ten. So I have a the scales are more similar. So now it's still very, there's a large difference, but I can see the both functions. So there are other ways of doing this. The problem with using this plotting option is that I will have many, uh, if I have many sets of data, it will become a, a long expression and you usually don't want to have very long lines of text. So what I can do is put both of them one below the other. Okay. And I run it. But if I do this, I only see one line. Why? Because I'm basically, when I call the first plot, command it opened a new figure called figure one then I said plot x uh, y2 and it used the same figure and made a new plot which overwrote the first one so if I want to avoid this and I want to uh, see both lines I can use the command hold on so hold until I do the next plot and plot them together so if I do this I can see both lines so this is uh, better when you want to pl plot a lot of data and 
you maybe also want to format data differently. So for example, I can increase the line width of one of them. And now it will change. I could do Y3, let's say Y3 is a slightly more complicated function, a polynomial. Let's go back to two. Again, I need to put hold on here. I could also put hold off here, but it's actually not necessary. This hold off would mean, okay, now plot with whatever you have accumulated in the plotting commands. The hold off command is useful if you're running, for example, loops, uh, plots on a loop, because you want to be able to uh, write hold on uh, next to the plot command inside a loop. But when you finish the loop, you want to plot everything, you write hold off outside the loop and it works. So now I have, okay, again, one of the, one of the, the, fourth power is too high so basically they are very far away i cannot see the graphs very well but if i go to ah yes I, with the right button i so basically even if i zoom a lot they are very separated all the time and the x squared and x cubed over 10 they are very very similar so for example i will divide this by 100 and let's see what happens so now they are more on the same on the same order of magnitude so for example i can put labels So if I'm correct, if I put a label, I need to use commas. So this would be x square, x x cube over 100. not working ah sorry it's not labeled it's called legend so now i have okay it understand x square xq so i i did not attempt to make it very very advanced the formatting Apparently, if I clicked on these lesions, I can toggle the plots on and off. I didn't know that before. It's interesting. So you can do more advanced text formatting, but that will be maybe for another video. I think this is all for now. So the, the conclusions of this is that you can create a file save it and then you can have your commands inside the file this is a type of script m file and you can write whatever commands you want and in order if you have a vector that defines a, a domain in the the x dimension is basically i call it x but i would could have called it whatever i wanted almost whatever i wanted so i define an interval and then i can use the dot to perform different operations. So I could do another one just to show X is for exponential. So it would be minus X
Okay, so ah, let's do something. So x minus 32. So this expression is a little bit more complicated. For example, x is the exponential function. So this doesn't need a dot because exponential many other functions already work on all elements of a vector. So now I'm subtracting the number, the scalar 32 from x, then I get a new vector which doesn't have a name, it's just an intermediate quantity, is x minus 32. Then I, with, this, with the dot, I tell it to square it element-wise and that would be negated and be part of the, um, part of the, the function. So now I write this, okay, line with three. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's too, too small, so I am going to decrease the other numbers and I will multiply this by 10 still too small Okay, I'm going to do this on another figure because it's easier. So if I write figure, now it it will make a second plot. It was easier easier like this. So now the second plot is basically a very narrow Gaussian function centered around 32. Um, if I want to make a more broad and shallow Gaussian function, so I can change this, and now I have a broader Gaussian, Gaussian function. So this is what I make here. So now, because I used the figure command, I made a new figure, so I have both. Okay, so now this is all for this tutorial. I hope it has been useful. See you in the next one. Please like and subscribe.